The next stop on our virtual tour is the MSW facility. MSW stands for Municipal Solid Waste, although we affectionately refer to this facility as the Dirty Murph, since the material is a bit messier than the material over at the Single Stream Recyclables facility. The Dirty Murph processes both garbage and organics, which is why it is the sorting facility for your mixed compostable stream from your gray containers. After your driver collects your mixed compostables, which can include garbage, food waste, soiled paper, and even yard trimmings, and the truck fills up, the load is delivered to the MRF in San Jose, and the first stop is the scale house. All trucks must be weighed at the scale house before being directed to their designated processing line, where they will tip their trucks to unload the materials they collected for processing. The Dirty MRF processes about 90 tons of material per hour, approximately 1,000 tons per day. This is about 2 million pounds every day, and equivalent to 1.5 million basketballs, or 9.5 blue whales. The Dirty MRF is comprised of two different tip floors and initial processing. One area is for waste from multifamily dwellings, and the other is for waste from single-family dwellings. The material is initially processed separately, primarily due to the varying size of material that is collected. Multifamily dwellings tend to produce larger scale waste due to the large shared bins used for collection. The mixed compostable material collected from the towns is all tipped under the single family dwelling tip floor, but the process for both is nearly the same. At the multifamily tip floor, we have boots on the ground floor sorters to remove large items before the material is introduced to the processing line. The remaining material from each tip floor is loaded into its metering bin via a bucket loader and feeds through a bag breaker, which is a rotating drum with hammer bits that tears open bags. The now loose and accessible material is dropped onto a conveyor belt to begin its journey through the recovery system. The materials then proceed through a series of pre-sort stations, with multifamily on one conveyor and single-family on another conveyor. Sorters on both sides of the conveyors remove large items and contaminants by hand. The removed items are tossed into openings that lead to bunkers for storage. After the pre-sort stations, the multifamily and single-family lines travel by conveyor belt and the material continues onto six screens that separate material by size. The first set of screens separate items that are 6 inches or larger. The second set of screens separate items that are smaller than 6 inches, but larger than 2 inches. And finally, the last set of screens are the fines, which are 2 inches or smaller. The items from the first two sets of screens, that are larger than 2 inches, continue on for further processing. The lower, or third screen, that contains materials smaller than 2 inches, transports these finer materials for storage and transfer to the compost facility. The material then moves onto two air separators, which use gravity and high velocity bursts of air to separate light and heavy materials. One air separator unit sorts the items from the six inches or larger stream, and the other sorts items from the six inches or smaller stream. The lightweight items from both machines are then transported over the machinery and continue onto the polishing screens, while the heavier items fall back down for storage and transfer to the compost facility. At the polishing screens, spinning discs send two-dimensional film plastic and fibers, such as paper, cardboard, and newsprint, over the top, while three-dimensional bottles, cans, and other remaining containers fall back to continue through the process. Meanwhile, all the fines and compostable items fall to the very bottom conveyor and are stored for transfer to, you guessed it, the compost facility. After the polishing screens are four optical sorters. The optical sorters utilize infrared technology that tell the equipment what material it needs to send over. With a shot of air, the selected material is ejected over while the rest of the material falls and continue through the process. The first optical sorter sorts any paper that was not captured through the polishing screen. The second optical sorter sorts HDPE, high density polyethylene, including detergent bottles and milk jugs. 
The third optical sorter sorts PET, polyethylene terephthalate, including water bottles and peanut butter jars. The fourth optical sorter sorts plastics numbered 2 through 7. The material then moves to the eddy current separator, which has a strong magnetic belt that has positive and negative loops of electrical current. This causes non-ferrous metals to go flying over, separating the material into its own stream. Finally, the material moves to our four Max AI quality control units, which are programmed to identify specific material types and extract anything that does not belong in the stream. Max 1 rejects anything other than HDPE, natural, and color. Max 2 does the same for PET. Max 3 rejects anything that's not plastic 2 through 7. Max 4 rejects any material that is not aluminum. Now, we loop back to the heavy items from the air separator, which have been transported to the electromagnetic separator that removes ferrous metals from the stream. After the metals are removed from the stream, they continue to the dual max AI last chance recovery where remaining plastics and aluminum are recovered from the stream. The max AI autonomous quality control combined with manual quality control helps us achieve higher diversion rates. A baler prepares material for market. Computer systems connected to the material bunkers notify MRF employees when there is enough material accumulated for baling. Now, let's take another look at the line that was transporting the fines and compostables. At the end of the compost line, additional sorters remove any remaining recoverable items from the stream before the material is sent to the storage area for transport to the ZBEST composting facility in Gilroy. ZBEST is owned and operated by Green Waste sister company, Zanker Recycling. At ZBEST, all the organic material recovered from the MRF is ejected into a 350 foot long bag. PVC pipes are introduced into the bag and used to aerate the compostable materials. Retention time in the bags is about four months, at which time the contents are removed, turned and cured prior to screening. A density separator uses vibration and forced air fluidization to separate the heavies, glass and any rock from the lights, compost. The lightweight compost material is then transported to a screening system that is used to remove any larger materials which are then disposed. The smaller compostable materials are stockpiled and cured for an additional four weeks before being screened again and marketed as landscape compost. Thank you for joining us on this journey your mixed compostable materials take daily here at our municipal solid waste facility, the Dirty Murph. Rest assured that everything green waste collects in gray containers is processed to the fullest extent. If you have additional questions, please contact us at news at greenwaste.com.